What's up Data Pipeliners, this is Data Engineer 1 here. In today's episode, we're going to be finishing up our How I Write Pipe series by adding some parallel processing to our pipe. Let's go ahead and get started. So when we last left off, we had a working pipeline that was downloading data from our Singapore API, saving it to disk, and then filtering it for the station that we wanted uh, until it created a plot output. The problem here is that we had to download each day individually, as well as parameterize the days. So we had to change the parameter if you wanted to change the day that we're downloading. In this episode, we're going to talk about what I call sub-node parallelization. So this is a parallelization technique that you can apply to your node level functions in order to parallelize the process. A lot of these techniques also come directly from Qin Hui Ong's talk on parallel processing for your data pipelines. So I highly recommend you take a look at her talk if you get the chance. In today's video, we're not going to cover all the techniques that she talks about, but we're just going to apply a very simple technique using threading, multi-threaded pool. I should note that Ketro does come with a built-in parallel processing mechanism. This is the dash dash parallel command line argument. And what this does is it runs your nodes in parallel. What Ketro is going to do is it's going to take a look at your DAG, figure out what nodes can be run in parallel, and then we'll run those in parallel. These are the independent nodes until as the DAG goes down, you do have those dependent nodes uh, later on. The reason why we don't want to use this technique in this case is because if we were to generate a bunch of different nodes in order to download the data, it actually pollutes the node space quite a bit. There's going to be a ton of extra nodes that are required just for like a single day of downloading. Furthermore, the parallelization technique that Hedro uses under the hood doesn't support closure functions. Our programmatic pipeline and node generation technique uses closures in order to get the data from in memory to a data set. And so it doesn't really work. Let's go ahead and get started here. So we can take a look at the node pipeline that we have. We have our temp data function up here, a raw temp which downloads all the temp data, and then the choose station here. The get temp data function, this one is the one that takes a date parameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function that's going to wrap this function and then parallelize it. So let's go ahead and do that. And in fact, we're going to go ahead and write a brand new pipeline. So let's go ahead and pipelines and let's make a new pipeline. And the way this pipeline is going to work is it's going to take advantage of the partition paradigm. So this is the way that Kedro uses partition data sets and it passes around a dictionary that contains a key which will contain a value that contains the data that we have. I said contain a ton of times. Instead of passing a single data frame, we're going to pass a dictionary of data frames. And that dictionary of data frames is going to contain all of the data keyed by the date that we're looking for. So it's actually quite simple. So first let's create an initial date dictionary, which will contain all the dates that we want to use. Then from there, we want to create the downloading function that will download all those particular dates. And then we're going to do our parallel choose process, I mean, choose station based on all of those dates. All right, so let's first start by generating our date range. So let's create this function, generate date range. We're going to take a start date and then we're going to take an end date. One of the wonderful things about this is that we can use our parameters.yaml in order to figure out what dates we want to calculate for. Uh, which is still cool. So we still get that parameterization feature, but in this case, we're going to do it over a range of values. So we're just taking advantage of pandas date range uh, in order to generate our dates. We're just using my favorite comprehension, dictionary comprehension, in order to grab the date from that date range. And then we just have a true as the value. The true here just allows us to know that we want to download that particular value. Next, we want to do the downloading in parallel. So this is where we're going to get a little bit cool. So we're going to do a parallel temp data function where we have the dates to download as the input here. And we're going to be using the multiprocessing dummy pool. So this is the multiprocessing threading pool. So there's a thread pool here instead of a subprocess pool. And let's go ahead and add a few loggers as well to the process. Now, the function that we want to parallelize this process over is going to be the get temp data function. 
This is the original node that we wrote where we can pass in a date and then we can get back the data for that date. However, this function is not actually what we want in terms of a return value. We want to return two values. We want to return the date that we use as well as the date data. But here we only return the date data. So in fact, we have to wrap this function with a parallelized version of this. And the reason why we want to return those two parameters is so that we can return it directly back into a new dictionary that we can pass along to the next node. So let's go ahead and write a wrapper function here. We're going to call it underscore temp data. Is it's going to take just the date value. This is going to come from the dates to download keys. And then it's going to call the get temp data function again. So this is going to be the get temp data function. And so that's the original function here. And then it's also going to log that is doing this. So we're going to have a quick info start download for this date. And we're going to return the date as well as the date data. So this is going to come back as a tuple pair. And because we come back as a tuple pair, this mapping function is going to create a downloaded data variable. It'll be a list of all of the dates and the data that we downloaded them for, which means that we can turn that directly into a dictionary. So we can do download data dictionary is equal to the dictionary of downloaded data. Now here's one pro of using sub node parallel processing. Instead of having the Kedro pipeline run all the nodes in parallel, which can subject your pipeline to failure, you can actually catch any failures that you run into at the problem itself. So if we have any sort of exception cases here, we can of course just say something went wrong. And so this way, if just one day fails, we still get our data back um, for the other days, which is really great. Later on, we're gonna show you how you can use chrono coding to make sure that we are only downloading the days that we missed for the previous run. Okay, so now we've downloaded our data dictionary. We can return that downloaded data dictionary and we're done with this node. So let's go ahead and move on to the next node. And the next node is the choose station node. For the sake of this video and to reduce some complexity, let's just stick around with the version that we have already where you pass in a station ID as a parameter and then use that parameter to filter uh, the data that you get back. Again, we're going to use multiprocessing, and in fact, we can move that library up to the top. And we're going to follow a very similar pattern where we have our logging right inside of here. We give it the function name, and then we create a, a wrapping function around the original choose station function. And the original choose station function takes the temperature data, the entire set of temperature data for a particular day, and the station ID. And what's going to be passed into this function is the date as well as the date's data. So let's say the date and then date data here. And so into the choose station, we're going to pass in the date data and we're going to pass in the station ID. This is generated up here and we can pass it in here via currying. So then we can have station data and then we're also going to add in our logger here. And the reason why we're creating loggers inside of the function is because it allows us to more easily separate the different loggers. So here we have a different name. So we have parallel to station. This one is parallel get temp data. Uh, and so we're separating these loggers so that we can be very clear on which logger is uh, preferring to which function. And again, we're going to return the date and the station data. We call with pool 10 as P. The 10 here means that we're going to have 10 threads that are doing the processing in parallel. I'll have a downloaded station data as the final output choose station is the function. And now here's the trick. We're going to use downloaded data dict, but we're going to use item station. And in fact, that means that this function signature needs to change. We need to pass in here item and then date is going to equal to item zero. And then date data is item one. Normally we could use like a splat, which is the asterisk here to splat the data. However, because we're using a map function here, it doesn't quite work because the splat will splat into the map function uh, and break things. And so finally, we can just return the dictionary version of this downloaded station data. So now we have our two parallel functions and one date generating function. So let's go ahead and just return the pipeline with these guys because this is the finished parallel running DE pipeline. Now we have this final output of downloaded station data. Let's take this and create a catalog entry. Now the catalog entry here is going to be a partition data set type. 
highly recommend you take a look at our partition data set video to explain a little bit more about what the partition data set is. But for now, suffice it to say, it allows you to save multiple partitions based on a single data set into a single folder. So here we have the station data and the, the data set that we're going to be using is a pandas csv data set so this is the type of data set that comes back when you call the choose station function so right here this station data from the choose function actually comes back as a pandas data frame so we're going to use the pandas data set uh, in order to save the data so we should have in here a, a new folder we should create that folder for, ahead of time for ourselves and into that folder we're going to download all of our station data. Let's go ahead and add the parameters to our parameters.yaml file. So for the start date, let's go ahead and just try 2019, 12, 01, and then the end date, let's make that 2019, 12. So we'll just have about 10 days of data. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add it to the main pipeline. I'm just importing subnode, um, create the pipeline here, and then using de subnode as the new pipeline name. So we can hit that run button, and there it goes. We've started the download. You can see it does it, uh, it'll do it in groups of 10 because of the 10 threads that we're using. We finish all the choosing, and if we go back to our data here inside of our raw, we should see under downloaded station data, all of the data for each of these days. Uh, something that I forgot to add here is inside of the catalog, you should always add the file name suffix as .csv, just to make sure that uh, Kedra doesn't get confused about which files to use. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at what our Kedro Viz looks like. And the Kedro Viz actually shouldn't change too much. Instead of using the normal version of the pipeline right here, which is the unparalleled version, we have this parallel version. And it's actually very, very similar. This guy right here, this is the entirety of our parallel processing pipeline. We have our start date, our end date, the date range, the dates to download, yada, yada, yada. Um, and you can see here, there's actually a disconnect. We're downloading the data into this downloaded station data data set but we need the station temperature data set for the data science pipeline to run. The reason why these guys are separate also is that the average temp by hour function as it currently stands does not have support for our partition data set. So it actually doesn't have support for the parallel processing quite yet. But of course, it's very easy and straightforward. All we would need to do is we take this average temperature by hour function and then uh, parallelize it or even do it in serial just to get the output of the temp plot. And then you would have to change the outputs data set into a partition data set. Let's do one more where we do a chrono coding of this so I can show you guys how you can save state between your pipeline runs so that if you do have a failure, you can rerun the pipeline without needing to rerun the entire set of date ranges that you've already downloaded. So thanks a lot for joining me. If you enjoy this content, make sure that you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.